Hi everyone, welcome back to this series of project management key concepts from the project management body of knowledge. This one in particular we're looking at is cost forecasting techniques that you will see as you go through your project management career and definitely in the PMBOK as well. So what is cost, cost forecasting that we're going to see? It's as the project progresses, the project team may need to develop forecasts for how much it will cost to complete the project and compare these to the planned budget. So the budget at completion, the BAC, which we'll see quite a lot come up. But your project, as it's going along, maybe it's going along on track, but maybe it's going along off track, or maybe it's the cost is blowing out or whatever it is happening, the, the, the value you're delivering is changing. So everything changes. You know, sometimes things just don't go to plan. So we have to figure out how much it's going to cost us uh, to finish all of the work that we've got. And that's where this cost forecasting comes into play. So there are four main things that you will see on the PMP exam and in your project management career. Uh, and the main one that we're looking at today is the estimate at completion, because there are lots of different ways of measuring and calculating this. But the other ones that we'll go through in another video are the estimate to complete. ETC, the variance at completion, the VAC, and the two complete performance index, TCPI. So the scenario that we're going to go through for all of these is that we've got a project budget of $10,000, budget at completion, where 30% is completed, so that's our earned value, against 40% planned, that's our planned value, and $5,000 spent so far is our actual cost. So you're going to see these things come up time and time again, and we're going to use these in the calculations for this particular project scenario. Let's jump into estimate at completion and the many different ways that you can calculate this particular one. So estimate at completion, it is the total cost of completing all the work, estimated or the expected cost. So the first one we're going to look at is the actual cost plus the budget at completion minus the earned value. Now this is if everything is just going to be completed at the planned rate. So you know, no matter what's happened, we're still, uh, still expecting things to proceed as they were planned. So remember, budget at completion, $10,000. 30% is completed. That's our earned value we've earned. We've, we've completed that. 40% uh, is our planned value. So $4,000 is our planned value. $5,000 is our actual cost. Okay, let's jump into it. So $5,000 is our actual cost, AC, plus our budget at completion, minus our earned value. Budget at completion, $10,000, minus 30% of 10,000, 3,000. Minus 3,000, that's 7,000. So 5,000 plus 7,000 equals 12,000. That's what we're expecting uh, to have to pay to complete this project the estimate at completion, the total amount at completion. Notice that it's different to our budget, what we had planned. We'd actually planned $10,000, and now it's going to be $12,000. So this is going to factor in, we're gonna to have to adjust, we're gonna to have to do a change request, get more money, uh, maybe we've got management reserves, all of these things you'll delve into in the PMBOK guide as well. Let's look at the next one. We've got our budget at completion divided by our CPI. And our CPI is our earned value uh, divided by our actual cost. Let's delve into the calculation. Project budget, budget completion of $10,000. Uh, $30%, uh, $3,000 is our, our, our earned value, sorry. Because <laughs> we have earned that, it's completed. So here we go, budget completion divided by uh, earned value divided by uh, actual cost. Perfect, okay, so our earned value divided by actual cost equals 0 0.6, and our, our $10,000 budget at completion divided by 0 0.6 gives us 16,667. So if the cost performance index you know, is going to impact our project, then it's actually going to end up, you know, we're behind already, so we're gonna be behind for the rest of our project. So it's going to, it's taking that into consideration and it's going to be more than our other estimate. So this is a really good thing to know if the cost uh, or performance index is going to impact our, our estimate at completion. There's two more to go, let's delve into them. This one is if both the CPI, uh, so the cost performance index and the schedule performance index 
uh, influence the remaining work. So previous one we just had the CPI, if that's influencing the remaining work. Now we've got CPI and SPI. Let's have a look at it. So uh, basically we're just uh, checking out, we're including those calculations in our estimate at completion. So uh, actual cost, $5,000 spent so far, actual cost, plus budget at completion minus earned value. So $10,000 budget at completion minus uh, $3,000 completed. So 30% completed out of 10,000, 3,000. So we've got that, we've got that far. That's 5,000 plus 7,000. But inside that calculation, we've got 7,000 divided by our cost performance index multiplied by our schedule performance index. This is probably one of the most complex ones. Uh, and you know, even if you do get on the exam, you really more, you need to know the, when you would use these particular things. So if the CPI and the SPI, influence the remaining work, then you will have to use this longer calculation because these two things are included. And you know, once you know that, it becomes a bit easier for your exam. So we've got our cost performance index of 0.6, schedule performance index of 0.75. Remembering that our schedule performance index is our earned value divided by our planned value, not our earned value divided by our actual cost. So earned value is uh, 3,000 divided by planned value, 4,000. That gives us a nice even 0.75. So we've got all of these. And when we multiply those two things together, we get 0.45. So that's our answer there. So now we've got 5,000 plus 7,000 divided by 0.45, which equals 1555. So in total, 20,555. Now, because we've got cost in influencing and schedule, so we're behind on cost and we're behind on schedule, now as that pushes out into the future and that influences our future project, we get a higher estimate again. And that's why we would need to use this particular example. Now, lastly, you do need to know that your estimate at completion could just be your, uh, your actual cost so far, which is $5,000 uh, plus your bottom up estimate to completion. So that's certainly another way to look at this. Uh, you may actually just figure all those things, you know, re, re figure out all of the costs for your project and add that to the total cost that you've spent so far. That's another way um, if, <laughs> if you need to change plans completely and everything has gone off the rails. But all in all, those are the different ways that you'll look at your estimate at completion. And this is the foundation for the rest of the cost forecasting methods that we're going to see. We'll check them out in the next video.